What is a schema and how might it get you thrown out of the Olive Garden? Stay tuned. Before we jump in, consider helping us out by hitting like, maybe subscribe, and help us grow our channel while I tell you about schemas. Simply put, a schema is a model of the world inside your brain that helps you establish what to expect in a given situation. It helps you organize the information you know about the world and guides your behavior. When you go to a restaurant you've never been to before, you know what to expect. You're gonna walk in the door and someone will be there to ask you how many people are in your party, and then they'll lead you to a table where you will sit down. A server will come by with menus and ask for your drink order. They'll bring you drinks, by which time you're supposed to have looked at the menu and be ready to order. This whole interaction follows a script. And though you've probably never thought about this existing in your head before, this expectation of what will happen is a fairly complex schema. Oddly enough, sometimes a server will ask, is this your first time here? Have you dined with us before? Do you know how it works here at the Olive Garden? I always thought this was weird because it suggests that maybe you don't have a schema or that their restaurant is so radical, it's gonna entirely subvert your expectations. Settle down, Olive Garden, I think I've got this. It's not like I need to go in the back door of the restaurant from the alley, go to the kitchen and paint a smiley face with spaghetti sauce, lay down on the bar and request my order through interpretive dance. In fact, that kind of behavior will get you banned from the Olive Garden. I'm not sure if it's just the one on I-35 or the whole chain. Quick note, some people say the plural of schema is schemata. However, the people who first describe schemas just use the term schemas, and they were fine with that. So if there's some pretentious loser who tries to correct you and say, actually, it's schemata, tell them that they're about to get their schemas adjusted for when they'll get poked in the eye. Anyway, the idea of schema was proposed by influential developmental psychologist Jean Piaget and was foundational to his stage theory of cognitive development. For more detail on that, check out our video on it. According to Piaget, as an infant, you're born with a set of reflexes and sensory and motor circuits that you can learn to control. Those first elements of representation about your senses and body become the first schemas. For example, you form a schema about how to wiggle your arm. Through development, you build upon these basic schemas to create more and more complex schemas. Arm wiggling might become reaching. Reaching might become grasping. Grasping might become throwing. And throwing might become shooting a basketball. As you build and grow and learn more about your world, so too do your schemas that represent the world. Piaget further stated that there are periods during which schema development undergoes a lot of change and periods under which there is little change. When your schema fits your understanding of the world well, there's no need to change the schema. So this would be a period Piaget calls equilibrium. During these periods, things you encounter in the world is mapped onto your existing schemas or assimilated into them. For example, my daughter had a schema for horses as a toddler, and when she saw a deer, she called it a horse because she assimilated that experience into her existing schema. Similarly, she saw a giant fiberglass chili pepper outside of Chili's restaurant and called it an apple. Cute. On the other hand, there are times of disequilibrium when you realize that your current schema is insufficient to accurately model the world. The first time she took a big bite of a pepper and realized it was not like an apple, she had to engage in something called accommodation, where she updated and expanded her existing scheme to account for this new fact about the world. Schemas are important because they're our model of the world, which means they're critical to how we make decisions and how we interact with each other. Like my daughter's spicy apple, sometimes schemas can result in problem behaviors when your schema doesn't match the world in which you live. Taken to an extreme, these may even become disorders. For example, personality disorders may often involve uh, problems with schemas. Narcissistic personality disorder may result from an inaccurate self-schema that makes a person interact in a way that other people find unappealing and it drives others away from them. Borderline personality disorder might result from distorted schemas about what a healthy relationship looks like, attachment, and rejection. Because of this, there's a branch of cognitive behavioral therapy called schema therapy, in which the goal is not to just change the behavior, but the underlying schemas that generate maladaptive behaviors. 
I hope you found this video useful enough to accommodate us and update your schema to hit the like button. Subscribe to keep up with all our new videos on all things psychology. And until next time, keep thinking. Hello, Olive God. Yes, I need a table for three. What do you mean, caller ID? Come on, it was my first time there.